Hi, I'm Jim Sullivan, and welcome to Boston Rock Talk. We're here today with Sky and Ross over here from England, and they're about to begin their first U.S. tour as Sky and Ross. Played one date so far in D.C., playing Boston later tonight. And I give you Sky and Ross.
every star that fades in the innocence of love with no fear of the dark no truer words are said with nothing to regret you'll know the black or white the wrong from right will hold each other drawn to the water let it flow your way in no time you reach the border she'll call you onto the
Hello, welcome back. I'm Jim Sullivan. We are here with Sky and Ross and uh, a great set that you just played, that we just heard. And if some of that sounded familiar to you and some of it didn't, well, there's maybe a reason for that. And uh, why don't I throw it to you guys? Why might people have heard some of these songs <laughs> we were before? playing more Chiba songs. More Chiba it is. There you yes. go. Um, backstory, I guess, for people, because uh, you guys are out on your own as Sky and Ross, and you were two-thirds of more Chiba for quite a while. Uh, tell us a little years. bit about how it started and how it got to where it is today. Um, well, in the mid-90s, um, I was making music with my brother, and um, we met Sky at a party, um, and we eventually kind of got together to write a song with her, which was called Trigger Hippie, and we recorded that and released it on a small little indie label called China, and, and it did really well. At the time, there was a musical movement called Trip Hop yes. that everybody kind of lumped <laughs> us in with. We didn't really feel like we were a trip hop band at the time, but um, along with us, there was bands like Portishead and Massive Attack. Tricky. Yeah, and Tricky, too. yeah. And they, everybody kind of liked it, and we did quite what, well. What didn't you like about the term? I'm curious. I don't know, because we, we weren't really aware of the other people making oh. music at the time. Okay. We just did yeah. what we felt was natural. Right. And then the, the press kind of said, oh, you're all lumped together with these other bands. Got to have a label. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, looking back on it, they're great other bands to be lumped with. So we're, yeah. you know, in hindsight, quite happy about that yeah. term. And um, then we went on to make uh, three or four albums together. Um, you know, we toured the world. We kind of went everywhere we possibly could. Uh, and we had a great time, and then we had a bit of a, a break. Sky made some records on her own, solo records. Uh, my brother and I made a couple of records without Sky as Mochiba, and then um, I bumped into Sky again, and we were like... <laughs> seven years seven later. Seven years later, was like, yeah. let's um, get together and make a couple of records, and we did. Was it a party thrown by the same guy? <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun, right? <laughs> no, it was just on the street. I was like, wow, hello, Sky. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we went to a restaurant and got drunk and decided to make a, a record. That's all good art comes from. Right? Exactly, right. yeah. Um, Sky, when, when you left that first time, why did you leave? What was your reasoning at that point? <laughs> um, we weren't really happy. Um, I think we, all the three of us were, were not very happy people. Um, and uh, it wasn't a fun place to be, so um, it was suggested that I leave the band, and so I did. Did the brothers team up on you? <laughs> um, I don't think, I don't really remember it that way. I remember Paul wanted Sky to leave. I was kind of, I didn't really know what I wanted at the time. We'd been like together on a tour bus for about 10 years straight, and everybody had gone a bit mad. Mm -hmm. So I think just having a break from each other was probably the best thing we could have done at that Absolutely, point. Absolutely, yeah, it was necessary. Right. Now, when this came back together, obviously Paul is not involved in this. Mm. Um, was he asked? Are you still on good terms with him? Um, I'm not really speaking to my brother at the moment. We kind of didn't get on. On the last More Cheaper record, uh, we were pulling in different directions. It's the classic uh, musical differences. Um, so, yeah, we, we kind of got to an impasse where we didn't really want to work together anymore. And Sky and I had been touring uh, for the last sort of six or seven years. And we wanted to make a record that was a bit more organic and live feeling because, you know, every night when we're playing shows, we kind of felt like we wanted to make a record that was more closely linked to that as opposed to something that was, you know, very studio based mm -hmm. and produced. Um, so for us, it was just a natural progression of what we had already been doing. And, um, and my brother's set up a studio in England, and I think he's starting to make music on his own now. Mm -hmm. It's funny. You and I did an interview back in 1998. I was writing for the Boston Globe. You were uh, 21. Yeah. I think you were 25. <laughs> and uh, I remember you, we were talking about this. I did ask you the brother question. I said, yeah. Are you guys like Ray and Dave Davies or Noel <laughs> and Liam Gallagher? He said, no, 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 we're not. No, we're, we're not. Yeah, but well, eventually, change, yeah. eventually we found our inner Gallagher's. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Uh, Sky, what were the music you were doing after you left Mortiva? Um, yeah. What style, what kind of thing were you trying oh, to do? Oh, gosh. So um, I went to Los Angeles and I met 
uh, with Pat Leonard and uh, Daniel Lanoir and um, uh, I, I wanted to, I remember saying to Pat, like, I, I don't want to sound like more Cheever. So um, he's like, well, that's kind of difficult because <laughs> the voice. But so we tried things in, in different keys and I, I kind of went a little more um, electronica, I guess. Uh -huh. um, so uh, um, and then um, rejoined, I th it was 2009, I think, um, when I released the second record. And so I've since then. Um, continued to do the solo thing along with uh, with more cheaper. Oh, that's still ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Well. There's four records out. At the moment. I, I guess you know an obvious question, I suppose, would be: you guys are sort of rebranding yourself, I guess, in a way. Sky and Ross, not more Chiba continued, but you are playing more Chiba songs. So I guess what the question would be: why drop the fairly well-known name more Chiba to go under your own names? Um, we felt like it was more representative of who we are and what we're doing. Um, it obviously raises the profile of the fact that it's just Sky and I. Mm -hmm. um, and we couldn't come to an agreement with my brother about the ownership of the name oh. and what we were going to do with it. It was kind of a bit of a mess towards the end there. And so we just felt like there was less kind of baggage if we just you know, started doing something new. And in a weird way, the freshness of it has given us a new impetus. Um, amazingly, it's kind of, we're doing better at radio and things like that than we have done for, you know, a lot of time. So it's kind of cool to be a new thing in well, a way. Yeah, there's, a, fresh there's, life. there's <laughs> a sort of thing where, right, somebody who may have maybe little familiarity with mm. Morchiba hears this and goes, oh, this is great, this is yeah. new, <laughs> this is fresh. and. I can see, yes. And, yeah, and and at the same time, we're kind of uh, slowly winning back Morchiba's audience to us. You know, we've been touring all around Europe this mm -hmm. summer and everything's been going amazingly well. We've just started this North American tour and people are really embracing it, you know, and it, it's very nice. Um, and online, people have been very kind, and the album's just about to come out, and we're hoping that uh, it gets well received. I was going to ask you that. The tour starts technically before the album yeah. came out. Was that a, a mistake, or was that planned? <laughs> We'd already planned the tour before we got a definitive um, release date. But these kind of things happen all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but the people that come to the shows can get uh, pre-order copies, and we'll even sign them for them. So they, they can be the first people in North America to hear the record. You mean actual hard copy CDs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, CDs vinyl, and vinyl, in fact. And vinyl, of course. Yes. As That's long right. as they don't upload them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't leak it. Yeah. <laughs> right. exactly. Exactly. Um, well, the, the one track that's out for public consumption now is Light of Gold. That's right, Which yeah. is a gorgeous, you played today. Uh, a gorgeous, gorgeous song. Um, Want to explain a little bit about the impetus uh, for that? I don't know. You're doing lyrics now, right, pretty yeah. much? Yeah. Yeah. So how, how yeah, did that so, come from? Um, well, <laughs> uh, where did the words come from? I mean, usually, like, Ross sends uh, the, the song over mm -hmm. and then I kind of hum a melody along to it and then listen to that melody over and over again and then words just appear. Mm -hmm. And then I work out what it means <laughs> afterwards or I'll let other people um, make their own interpretation of what the song is about. And that, that's often best. I understand yeah. whenever I ask an mm -hmm. artist to explain a song, sometimes yeah. it's like, oh, God, just you explain it. You know, <laughs> yeah. and we did yeah. it. We're, we're done with it. <laughs> sometimes a song can have like a focus and it's like, okay, I want this song to be about. Yeah. But more often than not, the, the lyrics just appear um, and the uh, story comes after. The, the new record I've, I heard in advance, uh, it's... Um, Pretty electric in a lot of ways, is it not? I mean, this was a fairly, if I can say, languid yes. kind of set, stripped down set. Uh, but the new record's got some real guitar bite, and uh, tell, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that we'd wanted to bring some energy from the, the actual live band. Uh, we wanted the guitars a bit louder, and like um, uh, Sky's son Jager plays live drums on the record, mm -hmm. um, but there's still kind of the atmosphere of old Morchiba records. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds a bit like Big Calm, where there's kind of like lap steel guitar and there's the kind of cinematic um, fluidity to it. We we really wanted to keep that moody atmosphere. We wanted it to be deep and dark and beautiful. I'm, I'm not trying to suck up by saying Big Calm is one of my favorite <laughs> records, not just of you, <laughs> but of one of my favorite records, period. I, I, Love that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, we on. know that people really love that record, and I think that we definitely got something very right on that record. And so, whenever we try and make music, um, that is kind of like the center of gravity that 
around which we kind of rotate. Right. Uh, when we play live, we still do like five songs from Two. that album, you know, which is about the same as um, the amount of live songs that we play from the new record. So good, it's still yeah. kind of a very valid musical um, touching point for us. Doesn't feel old to you, doesn't feel... No, no, it's just, it's, it's not, I guess it was just one of those kind of synchronicity things where everything fell into place. Right, right. And, uh, um, I, I just wanted to take you back to the songwriting for a moment and not Light of Gold particular, but just anything from the new record. Uh, since you send Sky the music, and then it's up to her, do you guys ever clash on what she comes up with? When you send something and you <laughs> go, no, I didn't intend yeah. that at all, or... <laughs> no, no. Okay. There, there haven't been any clashes at all. It's been, it was really easy to work with Ross on this record, and uh, um, we we initially talked about maybe collaborating with other songwriters, mm -hmm. um, but um, the first song um, that Ross sent was, uh, well, it became clear in my mind. It was just beautiful guitar finger picking, and um, I had a, a a long sleepless night. I was heavily pregnant at the time, um, and then in the morning just like you know wrote the words and sent them back to Ross and he really liked them and then we kind of continued from there just kept writing and thought actually we could do this whole record ourselves so that's oh, how nice. it worked mm -hmm. out. I think there was a couple of songs that just didn't make it like that we both felt weren't as good as the rest but there was no point where we clashed creatively I think um, it's better to kind of just try and just keep working and find the good things rather than you know get into any confrontation about where it's going because what we wanted to do with this record was just find its inner beauty we didn't want to force it in any direction or a production style or you know think that we were trying to make a radio song or mm -hmm. anything like that we just wanted to express what we felt and then everything else would fall into place around it you know because that's the most important thing about music is the feeling what, what I like about you guys is the spaciousness in the sound. It's, it's like you don't have to fill every space. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it leaves the listener that opportunity to kind of drift in. Yeah. And be sucked in, be seduced by it, if you will. Yeah. Anyway, I've used that word before with you guys. I mean, it is a very seductive sound. I think once, once it starts and then it sort of envelops you, yeah, I don't know if it. I don't know how it strikes you when you're playing. I mean, it's your job, so maybe it doesn't strike you as it does the listener. <laughs> it doesn't listener. feel like a job. What's that? I, it doesn't feel like a job. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I've worked behind the bar before in the cloakroom, in the clothes shop, and all sorts. That That's would a be, job. Yes, that would be. That would be. <laughs> well, I, I wonder sometimes, you know, how bands feel when they're playing the material. I think sometimes they can be kind of distant from it. We're just playing the notes, and that's what we're doing. And other times they really are right in the uh, the emotion of mm. it all. Where, where do you think you guys fit in that? Um, it's nice to find like a meditative trance state mm. where you just have like a kind of out of body um, objective opinion about it. You, you just kind of you're just doing it, and then you go into like a zone <laughs> where things just I'm sure happen. That's not the tequila. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so, so are you sure that's not the tequila? Um, it's kind of nice just finding some weird, like, out of space kind of feeling to it. That's just that's how the only way I can express it is that that you play until you lose touch with what you're doing, and then you know you're doing something good because your body kind of just takes over and yes. and you're kind of sitting on the side thinking this sounds quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like muscle memory in a weird yeah, way. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, and and I think this spaciousness is always um, our songs are quite slow. I think I've got a really slow heart rate, so it's just you know. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, your songs do have sort of the same. Yeah, tempo. yeah. and I grew up listening to a lot of Neil Young and people like that who play really Nick kind of Drake, laid back. I think right. Yeah, was Nick he Drake one of your influences? Well. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we like slow songs. I'm, I do, too. They've got their place, <laughs> don't they? I mean, and I, I, I like what you, uh, what you carve out with them. Um, you're talking about just getting ready for the show, and you mentioned tequila. Do you have a pre-show <laughs> ritual? Some bands are very, this is what we do, you know, yeah. half hour, 20 minutes, 10 minutes <laughs> on stage. Do you guys uh, have any of that? Yeah, mine's usually um, getting the baby to sleep because I've got a 15-month-old uh, baby number four, <laughs> so trying to make sure she's asleep. So I'm really grateful having a late stage time uh, in... Uh, and, of course, you have one yeah. of your babies with you yeah. playing <laughs> mm, percussion. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's 20. But then just <laughs> getting ready, um, makeup and a little uh, 
um, sip of the tequila to warm up the vocals. Warm up the vocals. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. it's medicinal. Yeah, of course. Y your voice is so wonderfully soft and caressing. I mean, do you have a, I don't know, a more growling Chrissy Hines side to you at all? Or is this just... <laughs> when I'm screaming at the kids. When you... <laughs> 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 Mom, we thought you were yeah. so... <laughs> yeah. Um, I do sing like a lot like harder and louder when we when we um, perform uh, oh. live, uh -huh. um, and certainly like there's, on the new record, there's a, a song called "How to Fly" where I belt it out, and um, I think actually, I mean, going back to uh, the third record, "Fragments of Freedom," I, we we kind of tried different things, and I had to sort of sing a, a little bit more um, powerful, and uh, that kind of it really helped to um, yeah. I, had to push myself a little more. I, right. I much prefer singing quietly. Yes. <laughs> um, I've got to ask, is part of both. the process part of the set? Uh, no. no. We did play a couple of nights ago. We played on um, the rooftop in this amazing church um, in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We were doing a fundraiser charity gig and um, they insisted that we played it. And uh, so we did play it that one time a few days ago. And it's been quite a while since we played that song. Um, so, I mean, if you really want us to play it, we can try and put it back in the set tonight. Be nice. I okay. do love it, but, but since you're not playing it, why not? Um, it's difficult to choose what songs to play. I mean, mm -hmm. with More Cheaper, we've got like, you know, um, six albums that we made together mm -hmm. and we've got a new album. So that's, you know, it's, it's like 80 songs to choose from. Right. Um, right. We try and pick the ones that we know that people want to hear, but we also want to play some songs that are a little bit more obscure that, you know, that we enjoy playing. And we also want to play some of the new songs and turn people onto that. Well, like you said, you've got five songs, new songs in the set, which I think is a good balance. Yeah. It, it, you know, it sends a signal that you're not just regurgitating what was done years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's new, it's active, it's vital, and all, all the rest of it. Um, in terms of uh, darkness and light, because I think you guys bring both of those things to your, your material quite nicely, I, I don't know how to talk about it, but I'll just throw it out there. Are those qualities you think about when you're putting things together, the mixture of those? Um, I've always thought that the uh, place where they meet is um, the most interesting. Yeah. Um, Sky has such a sweet and lovely voice um, when she sings about very dark things it's kind of interesting because it's like you know it's like a lullaby about mm -hmm. horrific things um, <laughs> yes, yes. So, <laughs> well put yeah. so the dichotomy there is is kind of cool and those the clash of um of light and dark is definitely the area if it was a venn diagram that's where mojiba would be the clash that's good i like that <laughs> that's very good um well, you are going to play us out with the song you mentioned earlier, the yep. Clear in My Mind, uh, which is uh, uh, the very... F well, was that the first song of the album, then, when this thing got going? It's the first song that we wrote, yeah. first one you wrote. Yeah, and we wrote it really quickly, and we suddenly thought, this is really easy, let's do more of this. But then, as we developed the record, we realised that we wanted to make it a little bit more uh, wide-ranging in the, in the sounds, you know, so we've brought in beats and orchestras and, and different things, and like Moog synthesizers and stuff. But at, at first, it was really lovely starting with something just very pure and acoustic like that. Which is what people are going to hear now, yes. actually. Not, mm. I don't see any Moogs or any, anything <laughs> around us right now, so I'm pretty sure that'll come come that way. Well, look, guys, thank you very much. Thank you very Ross, much. Appreciate Cheers, Jim. It. And Sky. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, this is uh, Austin Rock Talk with Jim Sullivan and now uh, Sky and Ross one more time. <laughs>